This video will deal with modeling trigonometric functions in the real world. So we're going to take scenarios that can be modeled using periodic functions and apply our understanding of trigonometric functions so far to model those scenarios. All right, so the first one I want to look at involves a rider on a Ferris wheel. We've got a function here that models the, the rider's height over time. So you can picture the Ferris wheel rotating. The height of that rider over time will change as it rotates around its circular motion. Uh, we're going to analyze this function. Let's start by looking at the max and min heights of the rider. So we know that this thing has a vertical translation of 12. So I'm just going to draw a really rough sketch here. So we're, we're, we're shifting upwards 12. We've got an amplitude of 10. That tells us that we're going to be going up 10 units from our vertical translation. I'm just going to draw a rough sketch here just to help us out. We're shifting to the right by 30. So let's just say we're going to start here. This We'll call this 30. We've got a vertical translation of 12 and accounted for that. Because we're, we've got an amplitude of 10, that means we're going to go up 10 units from our vertical translation. So we're going to get reach a max height of 22. And we're going to cycle through back down to our vertical translation. We're going to dip below and we're going to go down by 10 units from that vertical translation. You can see here we're going to reach 2. Okay, so the highest point we're going to reach will be 22 and the lowest should be 2. Okay, 22 meters above the ground, 2 meters above the ground. Part B asks us to find the height of the rider after 30 seconds. We're being given a nice little expression. Remember, this is a function, so we can substitute in an x value, get out a y value, or in this case, we can sub in a t, a time, and get a height. Remember, this tells us the height of the rider over time. So let's just substitute 30 into our equation. Here you can see I've got 30 minus 30, which is 0. 0 times 3 is 0. The sine of 0 is 0 which tells us that we've got 12. So after 30 seconds, the rider happens to be at, at 12 uh, meters above the ground. And you can see that on the graph here. Part C, the time for the Ferris wheel to complete one full revolution. One full revolution is usually referred to as the period, the time it takes to complete one full revolution. Uh, so in order to determine the period, we'd have to look at our, our formula for period, which we know is 360 over K. Our k value being 3, picking that out from our equation here, you can see I've got 360 over 3, so I can conclude that the time it takes for this rider to go through one full rotation would be 120 seconds. So in any sort of problem involving trigonometry that you want to model in the real world, it's usually helpful to know these four things. If you've got these four characteristics, you can build yourself a nice little function. The last example, we were given the function. You're not always going to be given the function. You can always find the amplitude by just taking the max, subtracting the min, and dividing by 2. The vertical translation is essentially the average of the max and min. Uh, we know how to calculate period. Phase shift is usually pretty complicated when you're not given a function. But essentially what you want to do is find the value for which the function is equal to the vertical translation. And you want to shift the function to that point. It sounds confusing. I'm going to go over an example in a moment that will clarify the phase shift. This is probably the hardest part of these problems. It's also difficult that there's usually more than one correct function. Remember sine and cosine are related in that they're phase shifts of each other. We'll go into that in a little more detail in this next example. All right, so great example here involving ice cream. You can picture like an ice cream shop selling ice cream. You know, periodically they're going to sell more ice cream than, than other times. For instance, uh, in the summer, you can see this ice cream shop sells the most ice cream, whereas in the winter months, not so much. So what we're going to do is try to model this thing using a trigonometric function, either sine or cos. And uh, remember, we're going to do that by determining all of these, these key characteristics for this set of data. So that's my goal here is to represent a function that represents the daily sales in terms of the month that we happen to be in in the year. So let's start by calculating the amplitude. Remember, amplitude is the max minus the min over 2. So we're going to find our maximum daily sales. We're going to subtract the minimum daily sales. So it makes sense that we sell the most in June. We sell the least in December. If we subtract those two and divide by 2, we get a nice amplitude of 176. Our vertical translation, we're going to take the average of those two sales to get 199. Our period is going to be 360 over K. We know that our period is 12 months, right? It's going to take 12 months to go through one full cycle of sales. So we can solve for our K value by dividing by our period and getting 30. That takes care of these three. The last one we need is a phase shift. Remember I said that to find the value for which the function is equal to the vertical translation, you're, you're then going to shift the function to that point. So let's think about this. If I were to graph this set of data, okay, you'd see that we start really low at 45. We work our way up to our maximum of 380, and then we continue 
back downward to a low value of 18. So you can see here at approximately, at month, month three, the value of the function is approximately equal to our vertical translation. So you, you see our vertical translation is 199. At month three, we're at 195. That's very close to our vertical translation. So we're gonna say that this could be considered a phase shift of three units, right? Month one, month two, month three, three units to the right. Now, this helps us model this as a sine graph because we know that sine usually starts at zero or at the vertical translation. So putting all of this together, we could model this as a nice, a nice sine function. So we could say our amplitude is 176. We're working with sine. We've got our k value of 30. We determine that we're shifting to the right by three because that's when we, we reach our vertical translation in our, in our data. And we're shifting up by 199. But like I said, it's not always just sine. You could also model this using a coast graph. This expression would have the same amplitude. You can see my amplitudes are the same, same K values, same vertical translations. However, the phase shift is the factor which changes. Okay, and you can see on my graph here, if I wanted to model this using cos, cos starts at the highest value, the max value. The max value happens at month six. So if we wanted to model this using a cos graph, we'd have to count over four, five, six on our, on our x-axis, and you can see here that that's when our graph would be at the highest point. Okay, so either of those answers will be acceptable. This one does say, right, a sine equation, so you could just be comfortable with this first expression, but just it's, it doesn't hurt to remind you that you can model any periodic set of data as a sine or co-equation. All right, another quick example here, dealing with a Ferris wheel again. These are very popular examples for periodic functions. This time we've got a passenger on a Ferris wheel. We're being told the Ferris wheel reaches a max height of 11 meters at 10 seconds. So I'm just gonna quickly plot that. At 10 seconds, I reach a max height of 11 meters. So that's right there. And then reaches the minimum height of one meter at 50 seconds. So at 50 seconds, almost on the ground right there. My goal is to develop a sinusoidal function that models the passenger's height above the ground over time. So remember, sinusoidal means periodic. That's a sine or a cos function. So let's start by, you know, I like to graph these things. Um, I'm a visual guy, so I find it kind of useful to know what's going on visually. If this thing starts, if the Ferris wheel starts up at the top and works its way down to a minimum in 40 seconds, right? You can see 10 to 50, that's 40 seconds it's safe to assume that after another 40 seconds, the Ferris wheel would work its way right back up to its max height again. Okay, so you can see that after 90 seconds, I'd be back up at 11 meters. I just kind of prepared a nice little sketch for you here. That's the situation we're dealing with here, given the data that's presented in the problem. This one probably makes more sense to use a coast graph because we, we're starting at the, at the max here. It'll be a little easier to determine the equation. Let's look at the amplitude first. Remember, we need the amplitude, vertical translation, the period, and the phase shift. So remember the amplitude, we can calculate that by finding the, the max minus the min over 2. Vertical translation is the average of the max and min. So we get 5 and 6, respectively. The period, 360 over k. We know the time that it takes to go through one complete cycle from 10 to 90, that's 80 seconds. So we can just divide by our period to solve for our K value. We'll say it's four and a half. Our phase shift, sine or cos, depending on which one we want to use to model this expression, our phase shift is going to be different. It's easiest to pick out that this thing starts at its max at 10 seconds. So we could just say that it's 10 units to the right. Okay, that would be where we'd be starting. We're shifting over to the right by 10 from our Y axis. So putting all this together into a nice cos function, you'd see that we've got our amplitude of five, our, our vertical translation of six, our k value of 4.5, and our phase shift of 10. If you wanted to be creative and write this as a sine function, could just picture on the graph here, uh, our central axis appears to be at, at six. Remember, that's our vertical translation. So we could say that if we were to model this as a sine function, uh, we could say this is our starting point, but remember sine usually goes upwards to its max. Our graph is going downwards, so we're going to account for that by putting this little negative in front. That's a reflection over that vertical translation line. The amplitude and our k value and the vertical translation are all the same. The only thing that changes is the phase shift. We've got to account for the fact that we're starting at 30 seconds. Okay, so that's how you could write that expression as a sine function. It's really up to you. Um, which one you want in this case because it just asks us for a sinusoidal function. A lot of people get confused with this reflection, but either of these is valid. 
All right, so great, we came up with a model. We're now able to determine the passenger's height at 78 seconds by using our function. 78 seconds is a time. We could substitute that in for x and we can determine y because this is a function. Remember, you substitute something in, you get something out. So we're gonna substitute in 78. We get 78 minus 10 times 4.5. We're taking the cos of that value and multiplying by five and adding six. You get 8.98, that tells us that passenger is 8.98 meters above the ground after 78 seconds.